Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over the AP Physics 1 Torque and Rotational Motion Review for the AP exam, um, but this is also a great content review for just your in-class exam. So let's get right into it. So the first topic here is Angular Kinematics. So the thing with this unit is it is kind of a summary of everything you've learned so far this year, right? So the first unit is Kinematics, and now we have Angular Kinematics, so it's sort of a spin-off of that. Um, so just a couple key terms here, angular position, which um, we can represent as the displacement is just change in the angle. There is angular velocity, which is represented by this W looking symbol. And then there's angular acceleration, which is this fish looking symbol. Um, so here's a nice diagram of a circle representing um, this angular kinematic uh Breakdown. So the positive direction is defined as counterclockwise and the negative is defined as clockwise. And you can see that as the object rotates, that causes a change in that angular uh, position. And that angular position is equivalent to one revolution, is equivalent to 360 degrees, is equivalent to two pi ratings. So you really want to drill in and know those convergence because a lot of questions are going to give you something in, let's say, radians, and then they want an answer and say, like, revolution. So definitely know how to convert between those units. Another thing to know is that there is the same angular velocity and acceleration uh, for all points of the same rotation, all right? Um, another thing is that points that are closer to the center have a decreased linear velocity, and we'll talk about that down here, so there's less distance in one revolution. That is because linear velocity um, corresponds to the change in distance, right? If you think about it, if you have a larger radius, it's going to result in a greater change in distance when the rotation rate is the same. So let's say you had two circles, right? One circle was two centimeters in diameter. Another one was 10 meters in diameter but they both rotate around in two seconds. They complete one revolution in two seconds. The one with the 10 meter radius is gonna have a much greater linear velocity. Here's another very important key concept, the connection between um, linear motion and angular motion, right? So for linear, you have your X, which is equivalent to the angular angle, the linear velocity, and the angular velocity, linear acceleration and angular acceleration. And you can easily convert between both linear and angular values by just using the radius. So the radius sort of connects both the linear and angular components. So this is just a side note regarding forces. Um, when you have something that uh, has the same rotation rate and you're trying to compare it, you can uh, observe it using circular motion, right? So net force equals ma. The acceleration is going to be equal to the centripetal force. So we can just call that V squared of R and then just replace V squared with um, angular velocity times R squared because as we said before, you can connect linear and angular motion. And that gives you the net force exerted when you're observing it from an angular perspective. All right, so motion graphs. So this is very similar to just linear kinematics. Um, you can see some examples of position over time, angular velocity over time, and angular acceleration over time. Um, so the slope of each one corresponds to uh, each other. So the slope of position over time is these uh, angular velocity, and then the slope of the angular velocity over time is the angular acceleration. And then as for the areas, the slope of the angular acceleration over time is the change, that's very important, is the change in uh, angular velocity, and then the area of the angular velocity over time is the change in angular position. And here are the universally accelerated motion equations that you'll be using. So this is pretty much identical to the linear equations they use for kinematics. And so you wanna use these when angular acceleration is constant, and you can see all the variables are pretty much just swapped with their linear counterpart all right, so the next big topic is rotational torque. So this sort of connects with forces and dynamics, right? So a net torque is going to cause angular acceleration. And the equation here is net torque equals 
moment of inertia, which is sort of like mass, except it counts for how mass is distributed, uh, times angular acceleration. So that's very similar to net force equals ma. All right, so a greater moment of inertia will lead to less angular acceleration, given the torque is the same, and vice versa for less moment of inertia. And here's a very nice diagram that sort of shows you how moment of inertia changes based on the concentration of masses. And here's another diagram depicting a really nice example, and we'll get to more when we talk about rotational energy. Um, but this is where we're talking about what is causing that net torque. And because of the way the equation is set up, uh, if I can find it right here, torque is equivalent to force times R sine theta. So if you apply that, there was a 2016 uh, FRQ on this. I did a video on it um, where I found that the force of friction is the one that actually causes the torque. So if you're wondering why, um, definitely go check out that FRQ video. Um, FG and FN do not cause a net torque here. Gives you that equation. And so you want to draw the forces from the position in which they act, um, especially for free body diagrams. All right, so now I'll just talk about the general torque and how it works. So torque is not a force essentially, but it sort of is the thing that causes objects to rotate around a axis or pivot. So it's sort of like a collection of all forces and then is just a, a way to represent them. So torque is equivalent to force, which is just the force exerted times R, which is the distance from the pivot that the force is applied that can also be interpreted as radius. And then in some examples, you can use sine theta, and theta is measured in respect to the radial line. And here's a wrench, and it's showing you um, how the only component of the force that is perpendicular to the radial line, which is R, uh, is the one that causes the torque. So you can observe in two ways here. If you use this pink angle, you'd have to use cosine to find that perpendicular component. And if you use this uh, green side over here, you use the sine theta. Alrighty, so torques in equilibrium. So here is a example of that where we can see we have a guy standing on one side of this plank thing, but the plank thing, since it is off its center of mass, um, all of its mass acts at the center of mass. So it's not depicted nicely here. Um, but there is a 100 Newton torque that acts clockwise um, in this problem we can see here. And so the torque that the person is exerting is going to be in the other direction, counterclockwise. And that's going to be the force of gravity. And so here is the equation that shows you how it's being represented in this example. All right, so now let's talk about rotational energy. So for rotational energy, it is equivalent to... Um, when you talk about kinetic rotational energy, we talk it's equivalent to one half times moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. So that's pretty similar to translational or linear kinetic energy, um, which is one half mv squared. Um, you can see how there's correspondence between moment of inertia and mass, and then angular velocity and linear velocity. So here we have a, a ball object thing that is rolling down. So the force of friction, like we talked before, is going to be causing that uh, angular acceleration. And since it points clockwise, that angular acceleration will be clockwise as well. And since uh, linear velocity is already pointing in uh, the clockwise direction, it will be speeding up and getting faster. And so it starts with the gravitational potential energy, uh, assuming it's uh, released from rest. And that's going to be converted to both kinetic translational energy uh, as well as kinetic rotational energy. Now it's a different story when the ball is rotating up because now the force of friction is pointing upwards. Um, and so it's gonna be causing a angular acceleration counterclockwise. And because the ball is rotating upwards, right? There's that initial angular velocity going up, but that is pointing clockwise. Whereas the force of friction causes that angular acceleration to be counterclockwise. And so angular velocity and linear velocity will be decreasing. And then for energy, it would be kinetic energy translational plus kinetic energy rotational to start. And that's all converted to UG, assuming the ball stops somewhere at the top.
All right, so the final topic is angular momentum. So angular momentum, similar to linear momentum, is a vector. The symbol for it is L, um, and these are the units, kg times the mass squared over seconds. So if there is no external torque, angular momentum changes. You can see the equation for that, where uh, torque exerted over time is equivalent to the change in angular uh, momentum. So if there's no torque, um, there's no change in angular momentum. So angular momentum would be conserved. Now regarding collisions, so linear momentum, we talked about collisions there, so that still applies to angular momentum. And so if there are no external forces on a system in elastic collisions, then the total momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved as well. And then for inelastic collisions, only momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is lost. And for perfectly inelastic collisions, it's going to stick together, and that is the greatest loss in kinetic energy, which you can calculate. And just some final equations to note down here is the angular momentum of a point mass is just mv. Note that is change in linear momentum times radius. And then we have our standard uh, angular momentum equation, which is equivalent to moment of inertia times angular velocity. And then the same principles of conservation of energy, conservation of momentum, conservation of now angular momentum. You can see that if there is no net torque, then it would balance out. Just like how we talked about mv equals mv, now we have moment of inertia times uh, angular velocity is equivalent to the final moment of inertia times final angular velocity. Alrighty, so that does it for this review. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have a question, drop it down below and thank you for watching.